What's up everybody? Welcome to Backroads Angling. So today I'm going to take you on quite a little journey if you stay in there for most of the video or the whole video. Um, it's going to take some twists and turns. So in the past we've made some baits, some hard baits, like uh, Whopper Plopper, Whopper Plopper Variations, Poppers, we made a jerk bait, we made a trout spinner. I will link all those videos below in the description if you want to check those out. So we've never done soft baits because they're a little bit intimidating. It takes some money up front, takes a lot of extra effort. But in this video, I did jump into soft bait making and uh, it was enjoyable, it was fun, it was a learning experience, it was rewarding, all those things, but it was a lot of work. I think it's. The, I think this video is like two months in the making, I would say. I feel like I've had a few breakthroughs recently and now I feel like I'm kind of on the right path in terms of making soft baits. If you are a beginning soft bait maker or somebody thinking about getting into making soft baits, I think this video will, will be helpful because I made some mistakes and I think that you can maybe learn from some of those mistakes. So we're gonna start off with clay molds, then we're gonna cast it in silicon, and then we're gonna use those silicon casts to pour plastic baits. Once we get to that point, then we can play around with different color combinations and all that stuff, but first we gotta get through the hard part. Please uh, watch all the way to the end. That's when the fishing part comes in. That's when probably the most exciting parts come through. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody watching. Let's do it. All right, so this is everything we're gonna need to make these baits. So first of all, I just bought a little package of clay. This is a Sculpey. The nice thing about this is it doesn't get hard until you bake it. So after we have the clay blanks, then you need to make a silicon mold. So I'm just using this stuff I found off Amazon. It's one of the cheaper kinds. The reviews were good. I didn't get very much. So luckily these are pretty small baits. So we'll be able to pour a few molds. I don't know if, I think we'll be able to mold all five of these, but we'll see. So then once we have our silicon molds, then it gets fun because then we actually get to pour the plastic baits. So from Do It Molds, I ordered one quart of Plastisol. This is from their Essential series. And then I ordered some different colors. Uh, they were out of chartreuse, green and yellow. They're, those are the only ones they're out of. And then I looked at some other bait companies and these were also out of the fluorescent. That's a good mixture of colors we can start out with. And I got some silver flake as well. I also ordered some, some powder paints. These aren't anything fancy. These are just some cheap Amazon versions. I like them because they have this color and this color. So I'm gonna try and put the powder into the Plastisol and experiment with that and see if it actually works instead in lieu of not having the fluorescent uh, liquid dye. The other thing I ordered was some new Pyrex glassware that I can measure my silicon and measure out my Plastisol. So now I'm gonna backtrack and show you how we made these clay blanks for these baits. And then eventually we're gonna make some silicon mold and then we'll get into the fun part, pouring the plastic baits. And then at the end, we're gonna fish and see if we can catch anything, okay? So thanks for watching. Let's get to the bait making. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, a tadpole. A toad frog thing in there? <laughs> Did you get in the safe you want it to be? Getting there. Okay, so here's my finished masters. Uh, I made 10 of them. Two flukes, big and small. Two ribbed baits. Two uh, just normal paddle tails. Two kind of swim baits. A curly tail. And then here's an extra little ribbed one that's kind of long and skinny. So I really like that style. 
that's what I typically fish with a lot, so I made three of them. So next step I'm going to do is to pour the silicon on some of them. And then I think I'm going to pour a double mold. I'm gonna go five ounces. Yep. And there are air bubbles in it, but the air bubbles, I mean, you can degas it. I've, I've been seeing a lot of people online that degas it, but the air bubbles are supposed to come out. And you'll see it, it'll just be like, almost like fizzing. So now, let's pour it. Moment of truth. As it comes to the corners, I'm gonna see what happens here. So there it is, I've got, dang, I poured, I way overestimated. Got twice as much. Um, I might try to rig something up real quick and try and pour another one. I don't think I can get it going that fast, but let's see how watertight we are. Dang, so far it looks okay. I don't see any leaks. Let's see if we have enough silicone to actually make this work. <laughs> I think we're fine now. Both of them broke. That's okay. There we go. Just come right out, dude. Good. That one looks pretty good. Fluke looks good as well. Even the tail, you can see, turned out really good. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. Always breaks right at the tail. There we go. I can see the little eye dimples there. Yeah. Pretty good success with these. I don't know if I could have got them much better. I think those are gonna be interesting to pour. Okay, so now I'm ready to pour the plastic. So I have a microwave here. It's not the greatest setup. I'm doing some renovations on my house and I, I don't really have a lot of room in my house. So I'm just doing the best I can with what I have. I came outside because that my small little work area is not very well ventilated. So I didn't want to put a bunch of fumes in there if I didn't have to. So I got a thermometer. I'm gonna try and heat it up to uh, 350 degrees. So I think what I'm gonna do for this first pour is I'm gonna do uh, white and I'm gonna do green. I'm gonna try to make green tails and white bodies and we'll and we'll just start off with something that should be relatively simple and then we can get more complex as we go so i'm not super prepared for this all i have is these, these little uh powder paints for the colors for some reason do it molds is always out of chartreuse colored i tried like three different companies and they were all out of specifically chartreuse yellow so i don't know what's going on with that but i'm gonna go ahead and heat up a little bit of plastisol so the other thing is you can see right here it's like 40 says it's 47 right now so these are gonna cool a little bit faster than what I want. Will I be able to pour all those baits with three ounces? I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna go. Yep, we need to go higher. Okay, I think we hit 350. Yep, we're in the right zone. Now we'll add our white. It's probably gonna be plenty. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go add a little bit of green fleck to this one. Oh, I went way, way overboard. Just one more. 
one good one. Definitely wasn't the perfect pour by a long shot, but this fluke might be kind of killer. Look at that, I had some problems on the tail. Not perfect by any means, but that might be fishable. This is the one I'm really interested in. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Look at that one. Look how it's got a white down the center and then green on the sides of the tail. It's pretty neat. Let's look at this one. This one definitely got a little bit goopy on me while I was pouring it. Goopy and goofy. So it's got some extra junk that I can just tear off. That one could catch. We can at least use it to test it to see how it swims. These other ones were a fail for the first try. It, uh, the stuff started gooping up on me. Well, let's see here. Maybe I can tear this off. Yeah, it kind of deformed that guy, but you can see his gills and everything. It looks pretty cool. All right, so we got a lot of work to do. I learned a lot. I learned that it's gotta be warmer before I try and pour these. Because if it's cold, it just my plastisol just cools down too quickly. So, this is one of the ones that's in better shape. You know, the edges are a little frazzled, but Let's try that one first. I got five of them in here. Let's just do a swim test on these guys. And who knows, maybe we'll catch a fish. Looks pretty good on the hook. That doesn't count for anything. All right, the first one doesn't swim. I think the tail's too thick, actually. Or maybe the plastic needs to be softer plastic. So that's really disappointing that one's a bust crap that was probably the one I was most excited about it looks good I'm happy with it at least it's one win that came out of this okay so it's been a few days since I water tested these um, this one didn't swim right this one didn't swim right. This one also didn't swim right. The only one that swam good was the Fluke. It looks fine. I need to pour it better, get some better colors going there, but that one I'm confident can catch some fish. So I think I kind of aimed too high with trying to make 10 different baits all at once. But in terms of redesigning them, I'm gonna focus on just one bait. And then once I get this one, then I can focus on other ones. So what I did was on my blank, I broke off the tail. So you can see what I did is I just took some clay and where I broke off the bait, I attached some new clay. I tapered it down really sharply, made a new tail, and then I baked it again. So now this is gonna be ready to pour in silicon. jigs that I use all the time. These, uh, oh, I'm kind of turned yellow, but that's okay. Here we go. Should be enough for a few. Okay, here we go. This is our pulser grub mix. My melted baits. Not, I've been pretty sloppy pouring these. <clears throat> it's okay, I just use scissors and cut it away. 
not that big a deal. All right. There we go. It's not a bad looking bait. Looks like there's an air bubble right there on the tail. It affect the swim a little bit. So I did a lot of plastic pouring without the video turned on. So I wanna show you everything that I've made because I think there's some cool things. And this is kind of the, the end to the bait making process for this video at least. And I wanted to show you what we made. So of course we got the, the small swim bait and I made several different colors. So there's this one with the green down the middle. This was the one, the pearl colored. And so this actually came from, I showed in the video briefly where we melted down the pulser jigs that I use a lot. We melted those down and this is what it looked like. It kind of turned into like a, a pearl with uh, a lot of silver flake in it. So that one's pretty cool. Here's another one, green tail. This one's pretty cool with the green. You can see the green down the middle. A couple of these fishy looking swim baits with the gills and the eyes. I haven't put the eyes in yet. I have, cause these don't quite swim right, but we're gonna work on those. Here's another version of that with the, the green yellow tail. So those we're gonna work on to get the, the swimming perfect and it, we'll probably do that in a future video. Flukes, so we have the white fluke with a green tail. That's a small size, more small size flukes. There's that pearl color, the pulsar meltdown again. I could actually, that could actually be the color name for this pulsar meltdown. I like that, that's what I'm gonna call it. Just a straight white, a very good fluke for the spillway. This one I really like, it's got green down the center. You see how that looks. That's gonna be a good one for spillway. I think it's gonna be a hit with the wipers. Green one, the wipers will like that too, I think. And then uh, larger flukes in the green. These are gonna be flathead and wiper killers, I think. It's like a five and a half inch bait. Late in the season when the shads start getting big, they start keying on stuff this size. And I think that's gonna be a wiper and flathead killer. This is my favorite color for wipers and flatheads. It's white with a green tail, so. Uh, wipers and flatheads, that's the one. So that's what we've got, those are all the baits. That's the one we're gonna check out at the pond and we're gonna see if it catches fish. So stay tuned for the fishing. Okay everybody, I'm down here at a little pond and uh, we're gonna try out our plastics that we made. I got all different colors, chartreuse, white, pearl, sparkles, no sparkles. Uh, so. The last designs that we made of the paddle tails that swim pretty good. I got a lot of those. I got some flukes. It's not exactly the type of bait that I would throw in this situation. Probably trying for bass, I guess, is what we'd be going for. A uh, white fluke. But uh, I think they've got good enough action. I think we might be able to trick a few of them. So I realized I forgot my tackle backpack, so pretty much all my tackle is gone. But I do have uh, quarter ounce jig heads on these rods. I don't have pliers if I catch a fish. So I don't really have a whole lot of stuff to work with, so that's gonna force us to use our plastics. No alternatives, okay? So let's see if we can catch a fish on these things. After all this work that we put in on this, I hope we can catch a fish. I'll try the spillway pretty soon too, but I just had a little bit of time. I figured I'd give it a shot. This is the one I think I'll try. I think this one's gonna work good at the spillway. Um, so it's just a, that swim bait with a little green down the middle. I think that's gonna be a good combo. Let's see if the bass like it. It is like noon time with bluebird skies and it's really warm, so we'll see what happens. It's not too bad of a little number right there. If there were any wipers in this pond, we'd probably have them pretty quick. Let's see how it swims. Not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hopefully you can see that action. I think something will hit that. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
So just making that one final little alteration on the tail cause, oh, cause it to swim better. And I might have a problem here with my rod. It's a pretty good looking swim bait right there. Look at that. Looks great. I'm happy about that. Let's see if any of the bass are. Just cover some water. See if we can find any that want a midday bite. There's one. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. There we go, folks. First fish on the old swim bait. Look at that. There's the bait that did it. Little bass. All right. Feels good even if it's a small one. There's one. Little another little guy. A bass on homemade swim baits. Another little dude. He's pretty dark. There we go. I gotta think of a name for this now. They're not incredibly durable, I will say that. You see he tore that in half. I think we're gonna have to get a new one. Let's see if we can get a few more casts out of this. Kind of bummed because that's the one I wanted to try at the spillway. I think that's the only one I have in that color. It'll still swim. We can probably get one more fish out of it. There's a bunch of laydowns down here that I think could be good. That's where that guy came off of it looked like. Another one, two casts in a row. This one's bigger. Yeah, this one's bigger. Staying down pretty well. A little bigger, yeah. Sweet. It's a three fish bait right here. There we go, that's a proper bass. It's a proper 15 inch or so. Nice. Should we go for another one? He didn't tear the bait any worse than it was torn before. Okay. We found the spot. It's kind of shady down there. There's lay downs. Let's see if anybody else wants this. What else do we have here? Let's try the uh, pearl in the smaller size, the one that's working so well. All right, there we go. We're going with a pearl with some sparkles in it. So I think the brush is our is where we should target. Caught those two fish right out by this brush. I think if I could pitch something into those logs, I'd probably have good luck of pulling something out of there, but I don't want to go any closer with this. There's another one. A little one. They like this spot, huh? All right. Four on the new swim bait. I'm telling you, I think this is gonna be a, a hit for me. I'm gonna get ahead of myself, but swim bait really looks good. But they're not that durable. Maybe I need to use harder plastic or something like that. All right, so durability is an issue. Another one. Dang, they're loaded in there. I was just about to, oh, what was that? Something just moved out there. I'm gonna have to make a cast out there. Another kind of smallish one. There we go. It's just about to 
move to the other side, do something different, but maybe not. There's another one. Be bigger, please. Oh, I think he's a little bigger. He doesn't have me in a tree. Yeah, he feels pretty good, actually. This one feels good. Let's see if he's real good. This is gonna be the biggest of the day. I gotta, I gotta say that. It's not Russian. We have him hooked, funny. Oh no, he's a nice one. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Definitely the biggest of the day. Two pounder maybe. Oh yeah, he's a two pounder all day. I'll be like a two plus maybe. Hook fell out right when I got him in. Swim baits at work, folks. Doing some work. Nice. That's what he came on. Pearl with some sparkles to it. Makes all that work feel worth it. All right, everybody. So if you made it this far, cheers. Thanks for hanging in there with me and watching till the end. As you can see, the fishing was a success. I'm very excited about it. Again, the big takeaway from this video, well, there's a lot of big takeaways, but the big takeaway is that little rudder. That's what I spent a couple weeks trying to figure out what was going on with the baits, and that little rudder right there is the key to making a swim bait swim. It needs to have a tapered tail and all those things. It needs to have, you know, the, that roughly that shape right there, but that rudder is key. And I, for some reason, I wasn't recognizing that at first, and then it finally dawned on me that maybe that that rudder is the the the, the, ch the change that I needed to make. And so I just made that small tweak, and all of a sudden it started swimming. So, so these small swim baits were a hit with the bass. Um, I caught some on the pearl. I caught some on the white and green. So in the future videos, I'm gonna be optimizing some of the other baits and testing them specifically at the spillway. But probably down the road, the next bait making video, we'll probably focus on pouring some flukes, um, getting some of those ready and then trying them at the spillway. Because I think the wipers and white bass and flatheads and all that other stuff, I think they're gonna crush those flukes. So we're gonna do that in the future. Again, thanks everybody for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it if you made it this far. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something because I know I learned a lot, I hope you did too. I will catch you soon on the next episode of Backroads Angling. Thank you, bye-bye. This is on my homemade fluke. So it'd be an extra special catch if we get him. There he goes. Are you kidding me? <laughs>